All right, so this is gonna be a short little unprofessional video about how to disassemble a uh, LED mag light. So this is like the, maybe the third iteration or third generation uh, mag light D cell from the factory uh, LED, not one that's been modded aftermarket. Um, so that's kind of my unofficial title. The first gen used the classic incandescent bulb uh, back in the 80s and 90s, and what I might call the second generation would be the one with the xenon bulb, and then the third generation would be the ones that come LED straight from Maglite. And now we have what you might call the fourth generation that have the built-in uh, recharger where you don't have to remove the internal batteries. Anyway, um, so when you go to look online for instructions about how to disassemble the classic um, D-cell Maglite, um, all of them, all the ones I could find at least, were for the uh, older ones with the incandescent or xenon bulb. Uh, but these LED ones are just slightly different. You need one different tool. And I had an impossible time trying to find that information. Finally, someone in a, a forum uh, was able to tell me what tool I needed. So I just wanted to make this little video to help other people find out more easily. So we're gonna disassemble this one. Um, you can sort of see maybe, uh, you'll see when I take the cap off here that this is LED. The way you can tell is by the serial number. D is for, uh, it takes D cell batteries and the L indicates that it's a LED model. So the first thing we're gonna do here is remove the end cap so we can take out these old corroded batteries I gotta disassemble this thing to clean it out because it's got all sorts of nasty corrosion in there. So then we're gonna take out these old nasty batteries. And now we're gonna take the head off. Alright, so if you can see there, it's a little um, LED diode. This one's um, around 200 lumens if I remember right. Um, so the next part you got to do to get this center, um, center light portion out, this includes the light and the switch. You're going to pop out this rubber uh, cover that keeps the switch waterproof and so this is the part that I had a hard time with most of the instructions online um, even from the manufacturer say you need a 5 ths allen wrench or allen key um, that goes down in this tiny little hole here um, and then you would unscrew it but as you can see it won't fit down in there. So finally I was able to find out that these newer LED models require a Torx uh, screw head. Um, so I went down to Harbor Freight, bought this little Torx multi-tool with a bunch of different sizes. The size you need is a number 8, a T8 uh, Torx head screwdriver. But the other difficult part is that all the ones I could find are too big around. So if I can pull one of these out here. You can see how it tapers off at the end. And that taper is just big and or just small enough to fit in the hole but then when it gets bigger it won't go down in the hole so that was frustrating so what I had to do 
and you could do this different ways, but what I did was I took my Dremel and I put a sanding wheel on the head with like a 60 or 80 grit and I just went to town and made the diameter the same as the tip all the way up. Um, it took me five or eight minutes of grinding all the way around back and forth like this. Make sure you do this outside or in a shop somewhere. Um, so I took it down using my measuring device here. I took it down from the original, which was about three millimeters, down to about two or a little over two. Um, now that I've done that, it will fit right in the hole here and you gotta push down until it locks in place. And then you can just unscrew counterclockwise and it comes right undone. Then you're gonna push down the button and it's gonna slide right out with a little help. And there you have it. So down here is the screw that screws against the, the inside wall and holds this in place. So now we can clean it and put it back together. So you uh, basically need to get a T8 Torx head screwdriver. Um, you can get them all over the place. Um, if you can find one that's really skinny, lucky you, I looked everywhere and couldn't find one so I had to modify my own, but it wasn't too hard. I think you could also do this on a typical grinding wheel um, that you find in most shops. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing it by hand, but a Dremel or some sort of grinder would work really, really easily. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.